But yeah, biggest concern is, is 100% this. Just like every time I run, no matter what, right now, the first kilometer is like, it just needs, it almost like, it almost needs like WD-40. Well, thousands of runners from over 100 countries are competing in the Boston Marathon today. We're talking more than 30,000 runners participating in the world's oldest marathon. I got like a shockwave through like my patella and then through it as well. And did you think about stopping? How you feeling? Great, dude. Great. You feeling good? Yeah, I'm back. You're back? Back. Let's go. Well, I started, I started like dabbling back into it last week, but now I'm doing like six miles continuous, feeling good. The simple way to think about it is the first 10K, I would like to be like hovering slightly above goal pace. Okay. Um, and that's to preserve your legs for later in the race. Yep. And to shorten the race down, so to not exert any energy. Yep. From mile six to 16, that's where you're gonna make right. up pace. Yep but not in an aggressive way. Like you want that to feel very natural. Like on your training runs when you're like, dude, I was holding 412 and I was chilling. That's when you're gonna do that. That's also not necessarily flat section. So there's gonna be 418s, there's gonna be 410s. There's like, you just have to stay patient and not get ahead of yourself. And then the last 10K is where you wanna send it. And hopefully if you're patient in the beginning, you have the legs to close really strong. And that could be way under goal pace. No matter what, right now, the first kilometer is like, it just needs, it almost like, it almost needs like WD-40. Wow. Have you tried like any sleeve or like? No. Nah. No, nah, at this point I felt like it was like, well first I was traveling too much, but like, yeah. it doesn't hurt now, like it's fine. Right. Just make sure you get a little warm up in too. A lot of people don't warm up for marathons, but like if you need a K or two to, yeah, to get that, to get that thing looped up. up dude. <laughs> it's like legitimately WD-40. Dude. Regardless, it's been the, like legitimately the best program. When you're running a pace and you're running past people and you're feeling aerobically just so good. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Thanks bro. I love that. Um, just... Yeah dude, it's been fun. Whip shake out. Oh, cool. What are you doing? I'm done. I'm gonna go sit down. I'm gonna go say <laughs> hi to Tyler, but then just go to bed. <laughs> so, this morning we're off to Whoop HQ for the shakeout. We're gonna have a bunch of legends there, obviously. I'm gonna lead the shakeout run. We're actually gonna trail back to the starting line. So we get the start line, then we'll head back to, we'll double back back to the Whoop HQ, and it's definitely pain in the knee, but the plan is to kind of just get through the first two, three kilometers, and I think it should go away by then. So it's one of those things, it's, this patella tendonitis is kind of like the first bit of get going when it's cold is when it's really sore, and just super sharp pains every time you hit the ground. So yeah, I think intentionally it's just like, let's get through the first couple of Ks, and then get into it. But even this shakeout will be, it'll be good and bad in the sense that I need it. <laughs> I even just trotted across the road and that was a little painful, so. I don't feel it to be an issue on my speed. I just gotta get through it. Have you ever seen it before? That's the Whoop HQ. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, bro. How are you doing? Okay. Thanks for coming to us. This is awesome. You doing our fiability today? Yeah, that's Sarah's yeah. Sick, awesome. I yeah. fucking love this stuff. Awesome. Big Beautiful. man. Big man. It's going to help me today. Uh, work your way over here. And we're going to be spread out to do some things to get us ready for this run. Then we'll head out on our run with Dan and come back, do a quick cool down. When that cool down's done, we can head upstairs for brunch, some giveaway stuff, a Q&A, and just like to hang for a bit. Right, we are going to do that for us. Love the work. <laughs> Um, this is my first Boston. I'm pretty pumped. Like, houses? What's that street called? Oh, nice. So, just follow the people who know what they're doing. the mentality is still stick to my plan. Okay. I've got to do that. Until, unless my knee just goes. Yeah. I think you also got to be realistic. Like, the hardest thing we put on ourselves is the goal. And I'm very goal orientated. And so like, 
after this, I'll have another goal. Yeah. And I like it. You saw me at Leadville. What, and that goal is still there, and yet you've added another one. Yes. But you have to decide how much this means to you of whether you want to go to get it, even if that means you take three weeks off afterwards. Yeah. Or do you say, okay, I'm going to put pause on that one so that I can be running again in a week? I think we seek to run a 259. I think it'd be fucking unbelievable to run a 259 in Boston. For sure. Do you know? Yeah. See Enjoy you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be probably mile 21. Okay, cool. I will track you. Oh, cool. You got this. Thanks, dude. Appreciate Just it. Just trust yourself, right? Thanks, dude. Eat whatever decision yeah. you make is the right one. Appreciate right, it, dude. I'm running like a marathon just to get into your bib session. I'm trying to get off my feet, man. G'day, g'day, g'day. I do have an ID. I do have an ID. How come you ladies would have to take so many flights of stairs to get up here to get around? Why didn't they just give you a nice, simple, quick action straight through the finish line for you? They really should have. They should have. I should speak to someone for you. I, I should do that. Thank you so much, ladies. Let's just do it together. Let's just do it together. Yeah, so Play and then just keep it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, maybe don't try it now because it's close to the race, but for sure. I'm... They're like small. And they better than they are. Did you make that? No. Uh, Kristen gave it to me when I did the podcast. Oh, really? Uh, are you around? Yeah, this is Michael, Michael. G'day, mate, Dan. Nice to meet you. you too, man. And for the rest of the day, then? Yeah, I'm going to get these bikes in this show. Good, man. Yeah, dude. And then we go run tomorrow. Then we go run tomorrow, bro. There's the boy. There's my dude. Let's go.
you know, when you test yourself like that, I, like I don't know if, if I didn't have any issue, I would have made it. I would have gone close. I reckon like within that three to three oh five range. What are you gonna do about the knee? I gotta get PT. Yeah, I gotta go get PT for it. It's just so bad. Yeah. It just like I felt the fluid. I felt the fluid just go. I felt like a shockwave through like my patella and then through to the top. And did you think about stopping? Yeah, I had to stop after the Newton Hills because like when I went down, you had four hills yeah. back to back to back. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to get through, like thinking the pain could go away after yeah. getting through motion. Yeah. And then I just I, it, like it was so sharp. I was like yeah. concerned. What does that have to do with your knee? Well, my knee's not as bad as now, but it's fucking swollen. How are you feeling, bro? Yeah, pretty good. Um, stuff out there. Yeah, dude. Alright, mate, we'll see you in a bit. See you. What is he doing? Yo, you crushed it! Dude! <laughs> You're the med tech! What happened? <laughs> what happened, buddy? Dude, mile 16, that one before Newton Hill, like going down in the sharp one before the first hill. Yeah, yeah. Knee, blow, done. Every time I went down, it was just the most painful thing I could do. I'm in good spirits just because the like I'm grateful for being here. I'm not disappointed, but I'm I'm definitely hungry. You know what I mean? Like, but like not I am hungry, but like that that sub three is pain. Um, How humbling was that? Very humbling. I don't think I would have done sub three. I would have done like a. I was on. I reckon I could do like a three or three or four. Yeah, I mean, it's just way too hot of a day for that course. It's also very hot. <laughs> do not sleep on how hot that was. I won't. I won't, bro. But still, I definitely got confidence in certain things, and I feel like training or like let's let's include more strength work. Probably let's get a little strength work in. Let's do a longer block. You're gonna crush it next one. Yeah. That, and that's how you kind of have to think about it. It's like, you just roll this into it and then you don't even have to think about it. Then yeah. it's a low 250, you yeah. know? Exactly. Exactly. So, anyway, bro, I appreciate you, dude. Congrats. Congrats. Great job. Thanks, Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. When I finished, I was like, definitely, I was frustrated. I'm not gonna lie. Like, just because I'm very goal orientated, but man, upon reflection, super grateful. And just again, the cause I'm doing is a much bigger reason as to why you run these things. It's also inspiring so many people, including everyone watching here, to not necessarily run a marathon, but run something or put themselves out to do something. And our, our job in this space, mine in particular, is to help you be inspired to move better and eat better. And so, if uh, if, I don't, if I make it solely about me, it's it's not the reason why I started doing this. But it just made me hungrier to, to, to like definitely break that sub, sub three. So, um, you know, days are amazing days still. And watching everyone come through just really epitomizes the sport of yeah, marathon running and running in general. It's you're running, you're cheering for strangers, you're cheering for random people you don't know and bringing them home. It's a beautiful thing in this world, this day and age. It's a great way to be supported and uh, I, I love it. It's, it's an amazing atmosphere. It's a different form of uh, Metro card I've ever seen before. 